Welcome to this tutorial series on microprocessors. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at Logism. Uh, Logism is short for Logic Simulator and it's used to simulate logic circuits. <laughs> Along the line, we will be designing a microprocessor and this is the software we will be using for our lab sessions. Okay, so the software is very simple and it has a very friendly user interface. If you don't have this installed on your computer, just Google Logisim download and just follow the links. It's very simple to download. Alright, so without much ado, let's get into it. Alright, so over here we have some basic tools. We have the menu bar here. Alright, let's start with the menu bar. So file, everything here is very intuitive. I don't need to talk much about it. Edit to save. Alright, so under the project menu, we can add a circuit, we can load the library, unload libraries, uh, view simulation tree, edit circuit appearance, analyze circuit, get circuit statistics, and then options. We will have a look at these when we actually start working with the software. And then the simulation menu, this option is used to enable simulation or disable simulation. So by default, Logisim simulates every circuit. So <coughs> To disable that you just uncheck this but i'll, I'll keep that on okay all right and these are some other options which we will explore later on let's get to the toolbar so we have the change values here within the circuit and it's typically used to toggle inputs okay and uh, it, we have a shortcut for it the shortcut is control one Next up is the selection and then add wires. This is actually used to select objects or symbols and it's also used to draw wires. And we have the text tool here which is used to add text to the circuit. And we have a, a pin here. It's used to add a pin input whose value you can change using this tool over here, the change value tool. And we have another pin which is for outputs. It's used to display the output of a simulation result. Okay. And we have a not gate here, we have an end gate. We have an all gate over here. Alright. Alright, so let's see how it works. Let me start by placing a simple gate. Okay, I'm going to place an all gate. Alright, so this is an all gate. Let me zoom in a bit. Alright, so this is an all gate, <coughs> and you can see that it has one, two, three, four, five. It has five inputs and then one output. Okay, let's say I want my all gate to have only two inputs, so I'll head over to the number of inputs here and then I'll change that to two. Okay. Now, the facing is actually the direction of the gate, which I can change to north, to south, to west, or to east. I'll just leave it at east, okay? If I want to change the size of my gate, I'll do that here. Narrow makes it smaller, wide makes it bigger. I'll just maintain it at medium. Alright, and the output value, we have 0 or 1, 0 or floating, floating or 1. For most of our work, 0 or 1 is enough for us, so I'll keep it at 0 or 1. And label, as the name suggests, is used to label the symbol. So I'll just type O. Alright, and as you can see, we have our O here. Now, next one is label font, not really useful. And we have the negate stop, negate bottom. So supposing I wanted to negate this pin here. This very pen. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just put, say yes to this. If I want to negate these two, it's the same procedure. But I'll just put them at no, 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 no. All right. So let me connect an output to this all gate. All right. So this is an output, and this is also an input. Now, like I said before, they all have shortcuts, so I can use Control Four. Okay, Control Four. And then control for all right so to wire this to the all gates there are two ways the first way is to come down to 
the base okay we will explore this a little on. and then select the wiring tool and then you can just connect to the terminals you want to connect to okay all right control two all right i just selected the selection tool the easiest way and then the quickest way is to use the selection tool so with the selection tool if you want to draw a wire all you have to do is to drag okay click and drag and that's it all right now if i want to change the state of any of these inputs i need to use this tool over here this change values okay i'll use the shortcut control one and if i press one for an all gate you can see that the output is also one if i change this to zero you can see the output is zero like i said before by default logism simulates your circuit i can turn it off from here so now the simulation is not enabled so let's see you can see i'm toggling and nothing is happening okay i have now stopped the simulation but it's always useful to keep it on so i'll enable that all right all right okay so let me let's explore one more thing so you can also see data bits and the data bit is the number of bits for the all gates right now is currently set to one let me set it to two oops all right now the arrow says that incompatible width okay and we can see one here two here two here one here two here one here and that is because this guy over here is a one bit input the all gate is also expecting a two bit input this guy over here is a one bit output meanwhile the all gate is giving out two bits so how do we correct this it's very simple we, we change the number of bits for these to two okay so i change it to two now it's happy i change it to two it's happy i change it to two all right let me draw a straight wire So notice something, you can see that the color for the wire was green for one bit, but for multiple bits, you can see that it's black. All right. So let me toggle these bits and see what happens. As you can see, my old gate is behaving as expected. Okay. All right. So that's it for the old gate. Okay. Now let's explore some of the tools we have in the toolbox. So we have the poke tool which is used to change values i've talked about it the edit to the select to they are basically the same okay the wiring to the text tool now the text tool is used to add text some text here all right and then the menu to the label to the label tool is used to add labels okay you will explore that a little bit later and let's head over to the input output the input output we have button joystick if you ever want to interact with your circuit in any way you can use the input output tools okay and we have the memory the memory toolbox where we can see some basic memory the flip flops all the basic flip flops and then registers okay. if we head over to the arithmetic we can see some basic combinational circuits for arithmetics we have the other subtractor uh, multiplier divider negator all of those are here uh, when we head over to plexus we have multiplexes demultiplexes decoders encoders bits and selectors if we move over to the gate that is where we see all the basic logic gates from the two bar only two are accessible which is the end gate and then the all gate but all of them are over here now the last side is the wiring where we have splitter we have pin now the splitter is used to combine multiple wires into one or split uh, one let's say we call it a bus a technical term is a bus a bus is a collection of wires so it's used to 
split a bus into its individual wires or combine individual wires into a bus a pen which we know what we know what it is already and then a probe we, we've used it before and we have a tunnel now a tunnel is we will explore that later but sometimes your schematic may be too large and it might not fit on one screen so you may want to divide it into different different sections so you use the tunnel to connect pins okay which are not too close physically on the schematic we will look at how it is used later on we have resistor we have a clock constant power ground transistor so we will we are going to explore how all of these work when we start with the design okay so that's all for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions kindly drop it in the comment section thank you